Member Gordon. Here. Member Gaudet. Um, not, not at the moment. Member Kearns. Here. Member Cronheim. Here. Alternate Lutz is out. And Member Armstrong, uh, Alternate Armstrong is here, so at the here. moment, <laughs> if we're voting, I can vote. The notice requirements of the open public meeting law for this meeting have been satisfied. A copy of the annual notice was sent to the Adler Park Press, and the coast of posted in town hall and filed in the office of the township of York on June 28, 2024. This meeting will be recorded and available on Ocean Township's YouTube channel. Great. So, we have some minutes. Do we not have any um, well, here they are. council records? Does anyone else need a copy of the minutes or the agenda? The agenda are joint. Well, you know, that's a good, that's an interesting question. And I'm, I have to be honest, I have not had the time to do any hunting on that. However, Jen, we'll, we'll get to that during the meeting. Let's, let's just start with, uh, have people had a chance to read the minutes of the July 11th? No, no comment, no. Yes, but I wasn't. Mm -hmm. Jane, did you read it? Yes, yeah, that didn't look. <laughs> okay. And I have looked at them. So, uh, all right. So, um, Bill, maybe you can take a look at where the, the tree stuff and see if you have a chance to look at it and see if that represents what you said and everything. Second page. Yes, that is accurate. Okay. All right. So, anyone who was there want to say anything about the? Uh... I have nothing to say. Hmm? I have nothing to say. Okay. Well, anyone care to? Six approve these minutes. I'll move. Back to moving to approve the minutes as written. Any second? I'll oh, second it. Mr. Armstrong. Seconding. All in favor? Say aye. Raise your hand. Aye. Okay. Happy minutes are approved. No, I'll abstain. I can vote legally. Okay, so since this is the Shade Tree Commission, we'll start, as per the agenda, talking about trees. So I'll turn this over to Mr. Brooks, who is probably going to say more than a few words, but it's okay. A few words. All right. We, Parker Avenue, mm -hmm. um, you've heard me say many times about how many lurking monster trees we have in town. Yeah. This particular one, I had been on Parker Avenue to look at a tree removal permit on another property at the end of the property. Took care of that. So on my way out, and I always drive around looking up, and I saw the hole in the tree where there was a branch, a sucker at some point. So this hole had been there a long time. It wasn't very big. Hadn't calloused over. That was probably 11 o'clock in the morning. And I stopped, went, knocked on the door, no answer, no cars. Said, okay, I'll have to go back, get these people, let them know that they have a problem here. But approximately 2.30 in the afternoon, that tree failed. It broke approximately 18 feet above grade. The entire head of the tree landed in the road. This was the classic case of where a lurking monster goes. There was no wind. It was absolutely still air. It broke. And Gene can attest to the size of this thing because fortunately his guys came over and helped public works and got it cut up. My guess would be somewhere yeah. around six or eight thousand pounds it, total. It fell on that lady's Tesla. She was, she was crying. Huh? Oh, <laughs> you know, bad, bad enough. She was lucky she wasn't in the car. Was well, yeah. but that's a classic <laughs> example of. The tree that fails with no warning 
and kills the guy on the bicycle Absolutely. where the kids walk. Now, unfortunately, we have a bunch of them around here. But question. Sir. Was that a tree that had been surveyed when we did the town survey? They didn't survey private property. This was a private tree. To the best of my knowledge, so it was, was not. It wasn't within 10 feet? No, it was, it's outside okay. today. So the, I, I didn't see it. I gotcha. don't know. I haven't seen that particular property. Okay. But what I'd like to ask the chairman, if it's all right, is when the members are driving around, if they, if you see one, you think that doesn't look right, let Norm know, he'll let me know, and then I've got a paper trail to go look. I'm trying to do as much of it as I can in my normal driving around to look at permits. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But that one, things like that scare the hell out of me. But I know they're there. It was a, it was a black oak. Um, I sent you the photos of that. Did you think? Did, I think I should. Did, you, did everybody see him? Did you get him? Okay. And this well, wasn't a tree that was surveyed. By the it was pri a private property tree. A private, it was called but private when I was property. driving back up the road, I noticed the lean on the tree, and the entire head had grown in the sunlight, which it should. Mm -hmm. And it was out over the road. And then when I saw the hole in it, I'm like, oh, oh they need to be made aware of this. Right. Mm -hmm. And find out how bad the hole is. Can it be pruned, lightened up, and kept? Or does this thing have to come out? Well, the tree answered the question for us. I spoke to Mr. Higgins, who is the director of public works. And we are working on a prioritizing plan to get a lot of these bad right-of-way trees out. Because I think we're flipping the quarter with the chances to get a hurricane this year. And I don't want them all over the place. So um, that kind of leads into the third thing, which is we have an ongoing program where we're trying to identify them. It's taking time. Um, I spoke to Mr. Brown about another issue, told him what Mr. Higginson I thought. He's all in favor of it. So I'm going to be able to do some of it in the next two weeks and get that out there. And the other thing that's on that agenda item is that we've got to have some kind of a procedure developed as to how we notify someone who is on private property that they have a hazardous tree that is a threat to the right of way. The only thing I'm going to say, the people that live in that house would probably, if you told them, they probably would not do anything. I know Interlaken has in their ordinance where if there's a hazardous tree like that, they will be told they have to. It's in the Interlaken ordinance? Correct. No, I will look that up. Oh, yeah, check that out. <laughs> I will look that up and I will find out. I'll yeah, copy it and I'll bring the appropriate section to Mr. Brown. And we'll because find I out. think. Uh, uh, a house like the one where that is, I think. I know where you are without you saying know, it. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I think um, also when we get to the community outreach and program plan, I want to address this. But how do we make this a two-way communication? How do we make it put something on the website or something or educate people about the dangers? Maybe show a picture. You know, this can happen. That is something. Do, do, it, do it, education out that way. And then have a place where people can call in if they need help. Maybe you can come out and say, hey, could you come and see her? Somebody can see, or who, what do we do well, if this is a well, problem? Plenty of three people in town, okay, who they should be calling. And is, is, so now, whether or not we should have a list of uh, licensed tree experts in the area, if that's necessary, I'm not sure. But we can certainly tell people where they can, get, where they can go to. to you know, there's a list board of tree licensed tree experts. Yeah, board of tree experts. We can put that website. Put that, yeah, put that yeah on absolutely. Website. That needs to be two way. Well, we help educate people about the dangers of this and pay attention to your property with the increased rainfall, with hurricane season coming. This is important. And then also, the other way that you mentioned is to be able to perhaps have us that you have to remove this tree if we see it. Well, so well we want to be careful way. about that. That's something for the attorneys. So I'm not going to. Well, yeah, about. but I mean, that's, I think. Yeah, we'll get it. I'm going to ask, that. but I'm making notes on that. Well, two minutes, there's one thing that we should do. I, I saw, one of the things I saw for CEUs last year, I guess it was, was, and it was the third of, in it, of the ones that they've had. And I can't remember which organization it was, but it's basically street trees and the law is basically what it is, okay? And this particular one that I saw talked about 
three different examples where trees failed, people died, and as it turned out, the trees, one of them was a homeowner who actually had a regular program on his property, you know, and, and mm -hmm. be it whatever, and still no, had, had one of those catastrophic failures. Another one was a town that also yeah. was maintaining their trees, okay, which of course we're not, you know, and had a catastrophic failure. Mm -hmm. So in the court, they were, they weren't found liable because they were doing anything that you could do within a reasonable, you know, expectation. But I think that the, um, I think we should try and get the council people to look at that. And I think everyone in the Shade Tree Commission, maybe even the Environmental Commission, you should see those videos. At least one of them. You know? I'll try and get the uh, figure out which one it was. Uh, of course, I remember because I somehow I was able to determine based on either something the guy said. You know, there, there were three of those videos. I'm sure they were all somewhat similar. But the point is that this can happen. Okay. And when, we, when I send out the thing, I'll try and put, you know, we'll send some of Bill's pictures. This did happen on a tree that Bill even noticed didn't look right. And within less yeah, than four that, hours yeah. after he saw, an hour, he just sort of yeah. noticed casually the thing was in the street. And you can take a picture of it in the street. And there was no wind. There was not I have a lot of photographs of it. Yeah, I got I'm one. talking about permission, homeowner permission, what you can use and what you can't. So if it falls, I would take a picture of it on the street. If it was That's what I did. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't take a picture of her car or her house unless you ever permission. Actually, if I'm standing in the boat right away, I can photograph the tree. I do know that. Can you post it? Um, as long as you're not on their property, it, it is readily available. You could look at the tree from Google Earth. Okay. And right. the courts, I believe, but I will check, do know you're right because everybody wants to sue it. But I believe if you're photographing from, if I'm photographing from the municipal right away yeah. and documenting a threat to that right away, that if, if they have a bad tree and it's going to fall on our house, I can tell them, hey, you want to get somebody here, look at this, you have a problem here. But we as the town don't have any leverage to require them to address that. Okay. It's only if it is going to affect municipal property right away. So, right. And I think given, as you said, hurricane season coming and lines going down and all these kinds of things that impact everyone in the community, that it would be well, great to be able to enforce, have some kind of, some kind of. We have many hurricanes we had on December 1st, I'll be 100% accurate. It's the end of the season. Pieces shifting. <laughs> also, um, when you when you write, yeah. you're, you said you were working on education. Does anybody have any questions about what I just? I told just have a suggestion that when you talk to interlay, you find out for the what they had to do to get that put into the ordinance. I, once I read it and highlight it, I go to Mr. Brown, ask permission to reach out for them to them. I know he's going to say yes, but that's the way the chain works. What, what do they have? Do they have I do not know. know. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. I, but I haven't read it. I'm not going to guess. Let me read it. No, what I'm saying is, when you when you find out what you find out, let me know. If you can reach out to the town as a town court, maybe I'll talk to the shade tree commission. Yeah, but I want to just make sure that everybody's apples and apples. I have one of the suggestions when you're writing the educational piece about dangerous trees and so forth. Please always just put the boy, the little boilerplate. Of, trees are so important. Protecting our healthy trees. You know, planting trees. Just put the little. You know, we don't want to make trees just. Enemy number one, but, but just put a little, you know. No, profit. but people need to be aware of how much weight is up there. Yes, but you know what I'm saying. We, we don't want people to think, oh, we should be cutting down our No, trees. absolutely so not. What we want to do is that. show them the red flags for yeah. a hazard tree. Absolutely. That's what I want. To With the, you know, in the in the spectrum yeah. of yeah, we I've value been involved trees. in now seven fatal tree incident accident okay. investigations, and I don't want to be involved anymore. No, I understand completely. Not just houses that get broken down. Oh, well, it is not. So if people are in danger, that supersedes. How about if the postman happens to be walking up to put mail in the mailbox? Isn't that a public issue? I think if he's on private property, we don't really have any control over it. I'm not 100% sure. I know who to ask, however. Okay. <clears throat> I would. Uh, well, it would be the same thing if, if yeah, like act of God. Yeah, well, well that yeah, one, right. that one would be an act of God, right. because only a guy like you or me would see that what was a water sucker where that branch was, and 
your eye would be drawn to it. And I saw the hole, I saw the callus formation, I saw the opening. And, okay, that's been open to weather for a long time. There's things you can't see. That's correct. There's things you can't see. A lot of things you can't see. Oh, Especially the black oaks. Whatever you put. Tons of trees. Whatever you put. Whatever you put on the web, you should also encourage people, if they notice anything wrong, to reach call out. out, to reach out to the town for help, for whatever. At least have someone come and say, okay, yes, it is a problem. However, it is on your property. Here's the right of way. Here's the road width. Here's the distance back from the curb. That's where your property starts. We can do that easily. What I'm saying is encourage them when they have these things that they see to let you know. At least I point them in the right direction. Well, go look look yourself. Well, I will look. I know what the situation is. Yeah. Yeah. But, well. You gonna post, are you going to post a number to say, if, if I can call this number or to make it easy for people to respond? Because that's a big, the biggest problem people have. It's like, I don't know if you call. You're going to get me another 15 hours a week. I don't want to be full. No, or even if it's just call, the, you know, mm -hmm. someone, if it's, if it's the clerk or whoever it is, they need to know who to talk to because, you know, if they won't know who to who connect with. Yes, yes, uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's the if he has somebody taking the calls. It's a possibility. I know it is. I know exactly what he's going to do. He's going to go like this. Keep looking at me. <laughs> but you're right. We'll put, we have a problem. Let's find a solution. How about that? Even if you just said call town hall. Public works, whatever. Well, let's. We, we need to have a process that. Well, this yeah, is just bringing it up. We'll work the process. Yeah, we need a process. Okay. Now there's one other tree, but I didn't get a chance to look at myself. What was that one on Whale Pond Road? That was the one I wanted people to look at over on Whale Pond Road. It's a large black oak. We spoke about it briefly. Um. In the no, 96 or something. Yeah, um, it's 92, I believe. Yeah. Uh, 96. 96, I'm sorry. Um, the ladies from the convention tree is going to fall across her house. I don't think so. I mean, the terminal growth is good. I don't see any of the warning signs on the main stem of the trunk. There's no fungal fruiting bodies that would indicate the crowd root system. Um, this is our tree, I presume. Oh, oh yeah, it's our tree without a doubt. Um, it, it, it's it's just a big old black oak. Was it was it surveyed? It's an elderly lady. She's concerned about no, it. Was it surveyed when they did the survey? I don't know if that one made the list. Yeah, it'd be nice if you could. Yeah, could you can that too. Have you yeah. ever? Have you? Did you get an invite to to do tree keeping? I, I, I don't think I, no, I don't think no, I have. because he would have been on once that was completed, so you should do No, but I, I, I might have. Uh, I'd, have no, I'd have to see if I had it, but Patty, I know, did. Okay, I'm going to make a note to do that, too. I'll check and see. What's the address? 96, well up on west side of the road, and you won't have any problem finding it. I mean, it is on the edge of the road. And it's a healthy trade for it's a It's a large black oak. That has never been pruned, not line cleared, but pruned, and it it exhibits the kind of dead wood you would expect to see in a large oak of that size, and the dead wood is internal, I mean not on the periphery, so that tells you the root system is working because you you don't have terminal dieback. Mm -hmm. But I think the lady's just scared of the tree, which is. Okay, I understand. It's who, a big son of a gun. Who would trim it? <sighs> Her or well, the town? It, it, it depends on what you all decide. It's a municipal tree on municipal property. My gut feeling is that it is decided we've got to prune it. It has to go out for bid and be pruned by contract. Well, sure. The town's truck will not reach this. Well, first of all, Right now, our ordinance, which I keep talking to Dave about, and we talk to him again, if he, he either he wants to follow the ordinance or he doesn't want to follow the ordinance, okay? The ordinance would be that we would tell the homeowner he's got to, and he pays for it, okay? No, I take it back. 
what, what the ordinance actually says is that we would get a contractor to right. prune it, right. and then we would give a bill to the homeowner. That's what the ordinance actually says. Really? And if the tree has yeah. to be removed, oh, if the tree has to be removed, the ordinance that. says that we will remove it and bill the owner or put a lien on their property. Oh, people will love that. Pay, okay? That's what the ordinance actually says. Yeah. Now, this goes back more than a year. Maddie rewrote the ordinance very well, you know, taking all that stuff out of it, saying it's the town's responsibility yeah. to maintain the trees that are on our property. Yeah. All right, everybody. Okay? And, and that they. They but we haven't done it. Yeah. It's the same yeah, thing as why didn't they change the cost for trees for uh, businesses that are removing trees to seven fifty, just like the homeowners would. It's still three hundred fifty dollars. Okay. So every hundred trees that don't come down costs us the town's shade tree fund forty thousand dollars. Okay. Just sit with it's four hundred dollars. We're not getting for every tree that, that they pay. I just saw some plans. They, they're going to pay about twenty-five thousand, thirty-five thousand dollars. They should have been paying seventy-five thousand dollars. Are we just looking to generate money? No, we're, we're looking for. We're looking if, if they have to pay more, maybe they'll plant more trees too. That's the idea. Right. Yeah, I wanted to make the price the amount even more because you can't get someone to put in a recent size, decent size tree for seven hundred fifty dollars. It just seems to me you just you end up just trying to generate money that doesn't get used for anything. And no, that money. I'm if you started doing no, if first of all, first of all, we just spent we just spent say forty thousand dollars, give or take, to sur survey a bunch of trees, and we didn't even get we didn't get all the trees. Okay. Right. So you had a grant for that, though, right? We got a grant, but. The fact is that if we had that money coming in, we could afford to, to have it done. If we, that, that hundred trees I'm talking about was the same amount of money no, we got in the grant. You're, you're trying to make it higher to, to and, get and, them and, to plant. And, 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 and this money. becomes self-sufficient. With all these trees we, we're going to prune that are all our trees, right. Right, which are going to not be cheap, right. the money's got to come out of somewhere. The right. original shade tree fund had something like $600,000, whatever it had in it. okay. And it's, and we haven't planted a lot of trees, so it's most of it spent taking down trees on our property and so on and so forth. So, the, pro, the program, so we haven't spent much. The program can be self-sufficient. We could even afford, if we had a big enough program that we had, and had enough money in it, okay, we could have someone who is a full-time employee and who worries about trees instead of Bill and Steve Higgins trying to figure out how we're possibly going to get this done, and he's got no time to spend, right? You know, okay, because he's unlimited. He's getting enough permits. He can't even, get, you know. Yeah, luckily. He's got a job. Well, luckily, he, luckily he, he goes off the clock to go to the bathroom. He comes back on, punches back in. Not quite that. Yeah. <laughs> but he can't take lunch. He can if he's. I eat my lunch at the desk or in the car. Exactly. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Yeah. Why does a business pay half of what the residents pay? It's, uh, it's seven fifty for what? Is what? It's because they want. When I first brought it up, it was like, we don't want to mess with that now because we're trying to get this ordinance passed. Right. That was the, I met with the council one day. A long time ago, he says, why, why, don't we, why don't we make them pay the same amount? And it would, all they have to do is change. Who was our mayor at the time? Chris, probably. But, but the Mar reason? Well, Margie was here at the meeting. Margie was at the meeting. Oh. And I'm not sure. Okay. The reason, the short course, is that development like that, is anything that has to have a zoning board, uh, or adjustment meeting and review and resolution or planning board meeting review resolution for the development. Those trees are covered under the land use act. Now the question is why is it only three fifty? Because that's what it is in the land use act. Residential development. No, that's not the question. Oh. Question is why is well, it changed? That's what I have to work with, sir. I know, no, but I'm saying is why isn't it changed? I try to get it changed. All they had to do was change one number, in the, right? You got to have a public meeting and all that stuff. Just say mm -hmm. within the, this is it. Change the seven to a three to a seven, and you got it. Okay, well, I'm guessing that we've lost a, a million dollars since I mentioned it. It was. So it has to be mentioned again. Just saying. Maybe in, maybe in a council meeting. It's a joke. So it's very annoying. Really? I mean, you can see the amount of time I pissed away on shit for you know this grant business. No, I, 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 I was on the phone for an hour and forty-five minutes today with the woman at DEP, 
working some crap oh, related, right. related to, the, mm -hmm. to the grant and with the, what they want to do and all this kind of stuff. It's unbelievable. Well, you know, my next being Mr. Brown, I'll bring it up again. I'm going to bring it up. It's like ridiculous. It's like, who are they, who are they afraid of? Well, let's solve our stuff. Okay, let's move let's on. Okay, so the stewardship grant. We'll talk about the stewardship grant next. Um, so is there anything that you needed, like a vote from us or anything on this black oak trees or anything? No, yeah, I, I don't, I don't bring anything up like that. All I do is deliver information for you and ask you to review. And then once it's reviewed, Right. That's that's the way your process is. Right, I understand. So how are we reviewing this? Is this Somebody got to we need to go look at the tree. We need to we need to go look at the tree. It has not been surveyed. At ninety six Will Pond. It's uh -huh. not. It was not surveyed. Okay. All around it was. Yeah. Not there. It's like it was just. Well, a lot of stuff. They did a lot of pork. A lot of right around it. Yeah. No, we got areas. Yeah. There. Yeah. Okay. 96 well, we'll take a look. But All right. So, okay. So, so anyway, so the, the status on the grant. Okay. So we had a grant and we got our, you know, they did the survey of the trees. We got a report. Okay. Um, how many people have actually read the report? In its entirety? Yeah. I have not. Okay. Now, some of it is just to see what's in it because they've got a whole thing about what. Like Gene, I just, you know, it had a list of uh, expected costs if we we're going to take down trees. That if they had, a, they had actually a, by the year how much work we should be be doing. So much so, but I'd like to certainly your opinion on that. And uh, and so, yeah, so far, now it turns out talking with talking with the Pat Chapella today, one thing came up. They called it the they called it actually the community forest management plan, but I had to change it to forestry. But then she pointed out that technically. What they gave us is not really everything that's going to be in the community forestry management plan. We're changing the rules now, anyway, so we don't have anything that is either. Okay, but it's got a lot more stuff that's expected to be in the plan nowadays than we ever had. You know, so at some point, being familiar with that is good, and um, maybe I'll try and get you our last. I think I sent it out also. Our last actual community forestry management plan that we got approved by the state was so long ago, because. We were due to do a new one, but then they suddenly decided they're going to change everything. And then COVID hit, so they sort of gave everyone extensions. The plan's good for another three years, kind of a thing, you know. And uh, but the actual next one we have to submit is going to be a plan for 2025. And even though it's for 2025, it would be nice if we actually put something together somewhere early in that we could actually maybe have a plan that we try to implement, like what do we want to plant and all that sort of stuff in 2025. Of course. As far as the state's concerned, we don't have to really submit our 2025 plan until the end of 2025, which is kind of weird. Oh, thanks. I'll take it. Yeah. You know, but uh, but anyway, so that's so I would say that's one of the things we want to get into is so that we're ready for that, and the sooner we get our act together, the sooner we can come up with what we're going to plan and and, and so on. And obviously, they only can go up the areas that they actually surveyed. They didn't survey the entire township. No, and that's so, no, no, so, no, 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 no. We, that doesn't matter. It, the only reason that the only thing that mat would have mattered, let's say we had done this fast enough that we could have applied for a planting grant. Planting grant would have to be properties that were surveyed, okay? But anything we want to do with our own funding and so on and so forth and get our act together, you know. No, I understand. Well, we, which is what we want to do. We want to, we want to also find out if there are any more sleeping uh, beauties we're calling out there, you know, that we, we should rightfully be afraid of, you know? Okay? Yeah. So, 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 anyway, that's, so that's sort of where we stand. Now, right now, we're working to give them, give them back uh, the grant. Could have been up to 50000 they would have given us, but they gave us about 44000 something because the way we wound up, wound up working, we did it as a, a um, services type of a contract rather than just a regular you know, bid. We only got two bids, and, you know, and that's what we awarded based on that basis, which the limit you can do that on is 44000 and then change. So that's what we actually did. So... That being said, um, we're supposed to have, so let's say it's 44000 We're supposed to come up with about $11,000 in in-kind hours, okay? In-kind hours is any volunteer hours that are expended or at a, at a rate that uh, there's something called independent sector that comes up with nationwide by state for each year 
what a volunteer hour is valued at. Okay, so use that for those. And the other thing is the townspeople, it's based on salary. You know, someone like Donna had a certain amount of hours that you know, was part of the whole thing, and, and Bill and uh, Ricky Go, I mean, whoever. You know, those hours will get added in. Okay? And we come up, so with, there's not a question of being there, but it turns out that the order, the government, the state auditors have come after them in a way so that they're asking for, for something that's too complicated. It's going to cost everyone so, almost how much money, so we're trying to get it minimized as best we can. They want to see payroll records for like almost every hour someone sent, saying that sure the guy was working that week and how his rate was, and it's, it's really, you know. So I was talking to her about Ricky can come up with something that if we can get a sample of one for a person, you know, and show them that, that might, I'm hoping to find that good So I don't know, but that was part of why I was on the phone for you know, an hour and a half. So, on and so, so we actually got another ex an extension, but not an extension of the work period because the work period ended on July 5th. We got an ex extension on following the, the, the final report. report kind of a thing, which I have to get the mayor's got to go on and approve something. So I put the mayor onto the website because of the last mayor on it was Chris Siliano. You know? So I've got to give him a password and so I'm get him to wait a minute. Give me a break. But anyway, that's, that's where we started with that. Now, Tree Keeper, of course, um, any of the tree, you know, we want to be looking at the stuff that's in Tree Keeper, so that, the, and Bill's doing this, the trees that are dangerous and, and, ha and have, re you know, reasons to believe are hazardous, and those are the ones we're going to work on first, obviously, and so on and so forth, and keep moving. And any trees that we plant on our property somewhere, we should enter into Tree Keeper. Okay, so the tree keeper, uh, I wouldn't say you should do it all at one moment, but there's a video, a tree keeper video, that I think you've got. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll get you in there. I, I made a note to you know, put you on to there and confirm that you can put in there or not. Actually, I made a note. Tree keeper. Yeah, it's a tree keeper. So, um, because and and actually and once we now that we've got it actually it, there's a public the public will probably put it on a website too people can go into TreeKeeper and just look at the map of trees and maybe determine what the tree is if they're not logging into the main system they can't look at any of the characteristics of the tree and you know safe and so on and so forth and all that sort of stuff okay but they can see trees that get put in there okay and we definitely want to you know we didn't do we didn't know any trees except things on public property west of 35. And we still we still count. We made, we went around and made a count. We came up with over 3,000 trees in the Plus, it turns out we missed out on a few trees because they were also doing an <laughs> really kick up on this. They called it vacant sites. But for them, a vacant site was a place on a property that a tree could possibly be planted safely in the right of way. You know, and then they just identify that site and so on and so forth. I would have rather, but I told him, we'd rather just survey trees on there, just to see what I think of it. So, so that's, um, but so we're closing out the grant itself. Once we close out the grant, then we can look into the other grants. And there are other organizations other than DDP that periodically have grants that might be used to us if you keep your eyes open. Amgen has had grants. Sustainable Jersey has had grants for various things. And so on. Of course, I see a lot of DDP grants going to towns. Now that they've got the new tree ordinance, they have three times they have nothing going on. Right? Never had any tree, anything. I saw um, Gary Wabavo. He said three towns have adopted the state ordinance in the whole state. <laughs> All the other towns stuff up. Well, I think that's incorrect because I know four towns right up top. Well, there you go. Well, yeah. Mr. Wabavo. I, I saw him last week at the fair. Yeah. Well, anyway, now it turns out, though, I won't say we haven't done anything because Gene's been in touch with our local responsible person for the state, who's someone in Freehold, I think, right? Is that where she is? I don't know. Oh, so Gene. No, no, no. Bill. Bill. Me. Bill. 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 Did I say Gene? Yeah. I guess I was looking at him. You were looking at him. Apparently, my eyes and control. Oh, well, when are you going to give me a report? My uh, eyes are in control. Report. No, Bill. No, I spoke to our case manager very early on. Before this thing was due, and sent her copies of the land use, 
and the residential one. For her review, she had two questions I had to answer. She said, you guys are compliant. You don't have to worry about anything. I did mention what Norm mentioned earlier about kicking the rate up on the land use. She said, that's fine. There's no problem if we do decide that as far as the state is concerned. You decide that. So, yeah, we've been ahead of the game for that, and she's very easy to deal with. And she's also my case manager at Red Bank, so we have a little line of communication there. So. Okay. So, um, so what if we, okay, so now we've got the trees for Colonial Terrace is next on the agenda. Billy's guilty of not having gotten that to the... Uh, President of the HOA. So Billy will come in tomorrow and see if he can't get that done. And I did add um, your concerns, uh, Jack, about explaining why those trees, in better detail, why we didn't want the Doug firs and the Norways because of all their the problems that they're seeing with them. I wrote a paragraph about that rather than that just a little blurb. So. Hopefully that will suffice, and once they get it and have a, a chance to review it, I will work with them on it, see what they want to do. I think Colonial Terrace, they're looking at a grant for that park. Well, they the, want, girls, the girls are working on something over there? Well, that, if that's <laughs> the case, I don't know about that. But yeah. I put the list together for them. We discussed it briefly at the last meeting. Right. And I just have been too busy to get it to them, quite honestly. I did reach out. It's there. kind of weird because I, I, mean, I think they're talking because the property. I, 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 if they try, I mean, it's nice and everything. If it's going to be for that park, but yeah. if the park's town property. It is. It's a whole park. But they're dealing with you know. Yes, it is. Steam from the uh, public works. So, public works. So, yeah. Well, that may be a little crossover from myself and Steve because I haven't yeah. talked to him. Yeah. Yeah, and the key was getting getting the watering truck, which we have. Mm. Right. And that may be where the confusion is. Especially, yes. Is. <laughs> There's no moisture to get down 30 inches below grade. Right? So uh, 30 inches down? 30 inches down. There's moisture in the soil below that is bone dry. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so right So we're trying to keep moving on that because I, I, I suspect yeah. our plan is to try and yeah, make fall. a lot for bids and at some point and get that stuff in. Get it in the fall. Nice. Yeah. I have a run out of time. So let me know. Yeah. 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 Okay, Shade Tree Commission Planning Committee. Okay, that'd be me. So we met um, and let um, uh, Angie Bassi and we got uh, Julia Simante yeah. and we got a bunch of good folks with details from uh, Public Works and Patrick Sullivan from the schools and Ken Love and myself. And basically what we, we were talking about, like how do we make plans for you know where we want new trees to go and, and what do we want, you know, how are we doing with the township with the trees and what do we envision the future to be like and how do we achieve those goals. So, um, so we realized pretty quickly what we don't know, things that we don't know that we want to know and that would be maybe overlay this information to help inform decision making going forward and in the future ad infinitum. So for instance, maps of stormwater in the worst areas of flooding, the trees would benefit, be a benefit there. Um, areas in overburdened communities, areas as defined by the GDP that are lacking trees, that's a good could be a priority of places that need more trees. Uh, places um, we wanted to know what the, the percent what the percentage of the canopy is right now. I mean, as we said in the last in the last forestry plan, you know, there was a goal set, but we don't know where we are. We don't have the data. So uh, Julia and people have been talking, trying to talk to the county, trying to find out how do we get good GIS data. Is there a way to get it free? Sure. We know we can pay for it to get it, um, but we're trying to find out if there's any way with county or state or whatever to get you know that data of the canopy so we can. Put that in a new forestry plan. This is where we were. This is where we are now. This overall canopy is kind of important uh, for that information. Last canopy study that we had that said that we sucked. Yeah. That was was before Sandy. Yeah. So yeah. we're so overdue. So yeah. it's not now we go so far beyond sucked. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like a priority. So that's one of the things we're trying to do is just so we can't we can't do anything until we have more information. So what we're doing now is just trying to get all the information we need and gather that. 
one of the other things we need to know is, is what's in the, the uh, shade tree fund. Like I need I to talk to you about that. Like what's in the fund and what would our annual budget be? What do we want our annual budget projected to be? And then how do we decide how much of that is maintenance, how much of that is removal, right. how much right. of Those that are the kind of things that should be in the community forestry management. Yes. And we're for example, to... each year the annual report that I do mm -hmm. has a comment for what your budget was for doing things, which always leave blank. Can you send me? Oh, you always leave it blank? Mm -hmm. You leave it blank? I leave what's our budget blank because we don't have a budget. Then I fill in how much the town, like from Public Works, how much they spent on various things or from, from right. whoever else. You know? So we want to. So we, it's not like we have a budget for planting trees, right? Right. right. So that column is also almost blank. Right. You know? And then the next column is what we actually planted. I get that from right. various people. Planted, but we should plant some trees, sometimes like on a golf course and so on and so forth. But as you know, we're supposed to submit to the council, to the town, by November or whatever, what the budget is going to be and what it, we're supposed to be proactive in determining what we're going to be spending and what we're going to be spending it on. So I mean, that's part of this process is to sort of figure out how to, you know, right. get. See, over the years, it became a question of who's doing it. Bill's a, a part-time guy who can barely keep up. With, he, he can't keep up with the work that he gets right. in fresh work he gets paid. Right. Okay. Public Works doesn't have anybody that knows anything about trees. Right, so this is hot. This is we're talking big altitude here. We're not talking about this tree, this tree here, here, here. And, and this is why public works is in the room when we're doing this. Overall, what is our yearly budget going to be? And then what percentages, for instance, do we want to have that be? Right. Do right we project now, that being maintenance right now, removal? Our budget related right. to trees is zero. Right. right, but that's not what the shade tree no, 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 says. Right. We're do now, it, we yeah. start though that this community you should look at the that plan that. that by the way, technically, according to the DEP, what they put out is not really a community forest management plan. They sort of call it like that, you know? but they do have more stuff in there that's like what we're going to have. Because they do have estimates in there, okay? like they had in there. They had a list of how much they expected would be yeah. spent. That's why Gene, I like yeah, I've read the guidelines. Yeah. You've, you've seen, you've got the report, right, Gene? Yeah. So that's what we're working on, trying to get all the information we need so that we can make these kinds of decisions. But one of the things I need to do is like what, how much is in the fund, and what have we spent over the years, and just like have that basic information. Yeah, that, right. And then I what guess, we project to right. get. I, I, I can't even answer those questions. You have a copy of that plan, that report from them, right? The report from Davy Resource Group, their their plan. I think you do, did get that. Oh, I'll oh, check. Oh. So, would Steve Higgins have that? Would Dave have that? Who knows like, what we spent last year? Actually, I've changed it. Actually, I've changed it. Donna, did we send everyone the last, that last plan that we put together and sent, when we got back from them? What year? What what plan? It, that thing from Davey, the one that you worked on changing it, some of the text on it, so on and so forth. How long ago? It was A month ago? That's that thing that was in. It was that thing that was in, uh, you know, PDF type form, and you had to get in there with, with that, Adobe. That you came, and we went over it, and we changed the certain words right, in there. Right. That report. Now she changed the page on it. Okay, I, I'll see if, if I didn't. I'll send it right away to you. We'll send it there. Yeah, I don't know if I have that saved to my computer. And that has all that has projected costs for what they think things will cost. But I didn't recall it having any financials on what's in our fund, what we spent over the years. No, 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 no. Right. They don't have any of that. Just, just clarifying, just making sure. Okay. No, and no. That's what what I'm mean. saying is, they, that's that's what you're talking about. What is our budget? What going to, what budget should we have? Right. That's information. Right. And they're identifying things that they think should be the budget. Right. But they do. don't have tree planting. As part of that, as I recall, it's just the maintenance. No, the that was one of the things that I, I cut. There was something they were theoretically going to give us a sort of a planting plan, but that was mostly going to be related to these blank sites that I told them to stop get, get, getting. Yeah, yeah, no. So that. And, uh, and, and spend the money on surveying trees and stuff. Okay. You know? I mean, that's so, anyway, so, one of the way, things, the ultimate, when we determine where, I mean, if we have unlimited funds, we can plant wherever we want, but um, what we have to decide, we want to overlay a bunch of these maps. It's like it's like a Venn diagram. Where is the best place to put a tree? Where well, the most? Where would trees perhaps help 
where would they be a problem, where would they help uh, prevent flooding, where are there areas where the tree canopy is, is very low and people need more shade or more ways to moderate heat, and just all different kinds of things. And so you could sort of overlay all this information and say, yeah, this is an area that's really, really extreme. It's, it's, you know, and this is an area that, you know, it's got a lot already and we're not so desperate to put it there. So it's just, and then of course there's, so that's just like the basic information. And now we hope to engage more of the public and we hope to find someone from, um, you know, the, uh, one of the DEP designated urban community areas to actually be on the committee so we're not seeking for people. You know, people can weigh in on their own communities. So we're, just, we're, we're trying to find someone. Is there a list of items that we can take to this budget, like some of the things you just stopped taking? Well, we don't, I don't have a budget. I don't have anything like a budget. Can you create a budget a line budget? You know? Everything that this committee will create will come here for approval. And not in, in every, this the shade tree is over this committee. So what we're just doing now is just gathering information, and then we'll come here with recommendations and discuss it. That would be so much for tree planting, so much for this, so much for that. that kind of no, the budget piece. That's a that I mean the percentage. We can we can um, suggest percentages, uh, but uh, the actual cost for doing those things that'll be public works and other people. Yeah, this is just going to be like, we have X amount of dollars, Davies report says it costs this much to do this, we'll use that as sort of information for maintenance and removal, and then do we have anything left to plant, and just trying to come up with what we think would be a good balance of planting new trees, removing old trees, See, let me just, just trying to create a process. See, I've got my own theory. Okay. I think the trace we've which is being collected to plant trees, should be what we use to plant trees. And I think the town should have a separate budget for maintenance of trees under well, public works, which yeah. is not related to the shade tree. Plant. But is that how it works now? That's that's not how it works because nobody gives a rent's ass if you put that in. Why not use the shade tree <laughs> fund for maintenance? I mean, there's a whole lot of money. Is there? That's what I would There is a lot of money, but that's what it's, that's all it's been used for. You know? Well, that, but it's never really been used. If you, if you wanted to plant that if you wanted to plant five hundred trees, okay? Five hundred trees. Okay. And you're going to have a little guarantee on each tree, that would cost five hundred thousand dollars. Yes, that's how it works. Okay? That's more well, you than probably, you're probably not going to do that's more than that, yeah. no, that's no, but that's five hundred trees, okay? That's not like we're talking about a million trees, right? Five hundred trees. That's more than we have in the shade tree fund. And meanwhile, we probably we may have five hundred trees. We've got more than five hundred trees that we need to prune. Right. What's and we want to change the ordinance and have to, you know, right? Well, that's you know, more than the shade tree fund. Uh, absolutely. You know, over the roads. I don't know who's responsible for over the roads, but no, that's my point. I can't drive that's my point. The road So we need to have we need to have some separate kind of budget to do maintenance, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yes. Of course, then, otherwise, of course, you can't do the maintenance with the whole shade tree fund, and then we don't plant any right. trees. Do these budget lines get submitted to the township at the end of their budget each year? They would if you established. No. What we need is we need to have some discussions about it, but, but to me, the it has to be. Because the road doesn't have a lot of money to play with these. <laughs> so I think this is highlighting an issue that the problem is part of the solution. So, yeah. I mean, if this committee, if they say, it's like, look, we've got this amount of money. This is only enough to do this and this. Mm -hmm. This is a problem. Then that's something that can be addressed. Well, we suggest that you find out how much you really need, and how much you're able to do, right. and the difference is, or the combination of those two things, or whatever, becomes the budget. That's the plan. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but like I said, it's, it's the committee is can only make recommendations to this body, and this body can only make recommendations to the town. What do you think? Can I ask a question? What do you think a reasonable tree budget for maintenance for yeah. this township would be? I have no idea. I, I, I don't know. It could be hundreds if you really. What? But you need to go long term. You can't go. There you go. I mean, this yeah. is five. And what's the years. first thing you address? Well, I think. Well, the hazards. The hazards. There you go. Yeah. That's yeah. what we're trying to do. Yeah. No, absolutely. My guess is um, in here, regional, but the reasonable operating budget for your shade tree. Right. 
line item is probably going to end up being in the neighborhood of fifty thousand dollars a year. Okay. And you send that out for for the, for the most hazardous trees. No, you can operate with 50. Once we get these hazardous That's trees strong. under control now. That seems really low to me. No, no, no this is a trimming budget. You can yeah, trim a lot of trees because you okay. don't, right now it goes out piecemeal. Okay. You've got six trees, it goes out for bid. Gene's one of the vendors. I, I think it's on. more, more it, when, it could be a hundred grand. When something happens or somebody calls. Well, we're, yes, that is, that is true, but right, that's why we're doing this hazard thing. And we're going to prioritize them. Okay, let me let me let this let me add this. Okay, let's assume it was a hundred thousand. Okay, so that would be four dollars a head for the population of Ocean Township. Well, you're going to try and use some of the, the money that we take in, right? No, but no, no, the money that we take in, yeah, could be used. But I'm just pointing out if we had a if we called it a hundred thousand dollars, okay. the town's got about twenty five thousand people. Then, then I'm way short. Then I'm way short. Okay, just saying. But that would be that would be a hundred thousand dollars would be basically four dollars a head. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so tax, what's the I, best way to find? I don't know how many home, how many homes are there in town because it's not like capital. That, that's <laughs> exactly what I'm. Mean. But, but these but are all it questions. It might be ten dollars. It might raise everyone's taxes well, ten dollars. Look into. It. Well, we're going to have to ask people who help. We don't know those numbers. I mean, Steve Higgins is on there, so it's something I can. Well, you can find out the number of properties. That's right. smart. Right. Yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm okay. just saying. But I suspect it could be a new order. hundred thousand dollars could be a new <laughs> order of. Very short. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know how many homes there are. I'm guessing yeah. it's since there's five thousand homes, right? A hundred thousand dollars would be twenty dollars a house mm -hmm. a year. And I think if the people of the town became aware of that, and even if it became a, a, what do you call it, a referendum type thing, I think we'd pay. I wouldn't get the job done. Thank you. It'd be a start, though. Because now we're not doing anything. It, it, and that's my point. That's my question. What should that list of things that we want to do be? And that's maintenance, trimming, whatever these things are. I'm not. I can go back and look at my reference for the 20 years I did it for Rumson, and I can kind of give you an idea. A list of 10, 15, whatever it is, items. What we broke out, and I'll take a. I know about how much we did yearly. And the put, amount, a, okay, no, no, a, but put a percentage on. Okay, removals was this much. Pork burning is this much. Mm -hmm. And then you would name yeah, the things that we need to look at. Anything you can send me, I, I, I think you can send me, like, anything you can send me, like, would be really helpful. Because of things that you've got to cover. But you want to get to your tree gone. So you two are going to work that out? Yeah. Okay. You're going to send me the information. Yeah. Right. So, so, so we just got a couple yeah. more things. We have five minutes before it starts to go here. So it's okay. All right. So okay. Now CEUs, we should have it covered. I have to get to Diane Sermont and get her data to get it in. So we're, we're good on that. But that doesn't mean that I'll try and keep. I get these things in some of these places because these things not not just for CEUs only. They're good for CEUs. Some of these things, but they're actually good education. You know, you know, some of these things, especially this backyard forestry and all those things. They've got some interesting stuff. I'll try to keep pushing them around. I've got a good lens on that. The Shake Tree Federation Conference, at which they're going to have four training theoretically, although I haven't seen them say that again. Your wish is my command, sir. There you go. Okay. Wow. Excellent. Yeah. Uh huh. You set me up on that. Okay. Yes, I did. Uh, well, I have help. Okay. Put it this way, Bill. Anything that makes you look good, I'm all for. Well, yeah, 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 that's yeah. not possible. I didn't this, say good this is that's a different this thing. is. Mess with that is the total package for the entire thing. This is the core okay. training. Okay. 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 That's so, all core training. Okay. So the core training would be a, if you do the core training, it's a day. It's a whole day. Okay, we'll pass these out. Yeah. It's a They're whole day on October seventeenth. Yeah. Okay. So if you can make it and you want to do it, you know, we've got time. It's October. So we don't don't forget about it. We'll you know we've got a budget and we'll, so, you know we'll fund it. Sure, you know, so. okay. And I am going to ask Mr. Brown if I go to the whole thing. Oh, this is saying it. I am going to ask Mr. Brown if I go to the whole thing. 
Okay, sounds great. Are you, you, you must have had poor training. You would just go to the regular things. Yeah, no, I'd love it. Because I want to go make speak with some of the people that will help Patty. Because they'll be here. Yeah, no, it sounds good. Anyone else who thinks they may want to go, it's two different days in uh, Atlantic City, right? No. Yes, yeah, in Harris. Harris. Okay. So, uh, so and I don't have I don't have the figures. I don't have the figures, don't have the figures here. What it, what it is? Um, and that's the one that will give members the most information okay. and bang for their buck. Yeah, I don't want to go two days. Would you like to copy that as well? Yeah. Yeah. Let's just talk about I have one there, what's the fee? What's the fee? Yeah. That's good. Let's talk about what the cost yeah, is. I don't need one of these. Well, I didn't know what you wanted to do. Yeah, I have a talk. Give it to Ed, and he can, he can talk to people with the name, and I can say this. That's the whole package for the entire thing. 17th and 18th. Ed does give The core training is on the 17th. The conference is a two-day speaker. They probably announced that they probably announced what the costs are for everything, but I don't know what it is. And some people drive down there. And they've got, they had a whole thing about if you want to stay in the hotel. And you know, no, I want to drive in and I want to drive out. I'm there back to be my own bed. Yeah, I think that's a good choice. Okay. And, uh, okay, so community outreach, I'm not sure what we're doing. However, now that we've had all the discussions, I think we need to tell the community uh, about various things, more about what we're trying to do and so on and so forth. So, what is everyone, anything you think we want to tell them, maybe put on the website, you know, for example, the, 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 Access the tree keeper and uh, and so on. You know, the little bit they can at least see what the survey looked like, basically. In line with that, I spoke to Tracy about some of this. Um, she said if we put something together, they would get it out in the fall newsletter. That'd be great. So we we don't have a hell of a lot of time, but we do have some time. Right. So I'll okay. scribble some thoughts up and get them to you, and you throw them. To the send them to you know. Well, I'm going to get them to Norm, and he'll get them to you. And I think I want oh, to send out, so there's two things I want to send out. I want to send out the things to everybody. I've got to send out, I want to send out the, uh, the plan that we've got, you know, make sure that we've got three people access. Um, the tree ordinance, there were tree ordinance, you know, state tree ordinance uh, webinars, there were three of them that, that people could go read. And, uh, and even I'm going to do the uh, law tree. All right. All right. Anyone else uh, have anything? Uh, I think you should consider the coaster as, a, as an audience, as a helper to get communications out. They have a lot of stuff on Ocean Township. That's a really good idea. People read it. It's actually for a little tiny rag. It's, it's pretty, pretty good. good. It's it's pretty pretty good. Pretty yeah, it always surprised me. Yeah. And I happen to know the owner. Okay. Oh, guess what you we just should definitely. And, and can you just CC everybody, Bill, when you when you send? Uh, I will send it to you. I'll send it. Because I'll I'm send it to Norm. Too, because I gotta I gotta do what I've been told. So I'll send okay. it to Norm. You know, the stuff that pertains to your committee directly, I'll make sure I can do that. Otherwise, I'll go Norm to you. But well, Norm will and Norm will send it. To me. Right. Send it. Just it all sounds good. Send it. The coaster is distributed all over the township. In some places it's free, like restaurants. Oh, yeah, yeah, coffee shops. So, yeah. I mean, if people do that, it would be nice. One more thing. Okay. NJUCF sent out an email today that indicated that T-Mobile will be is giving grants for towns that have 50,000 a population of 50,000 or less. So if we qualify, it's something to look into. These are T-Mobile hometown grants and therefore public space improvements for trails, also for technology improvements in libraries. So I think it might be interesting to look into, uh, but Initially, we have to, I don't know what our population is, but if it's less than 50,000, then we would be able to qualify. Thank you. So, so where, did you see, where did you see this? Uh, there was an email sent today 
um, after 12 o'clock, between 12 and 1. You mean an email sent to you? Yeah, because I, I took the uh, training, the NJUCF training, some on their mailing list. Okay, maybe I got one too, but maybe would you send that to Patty, uh, to, I mean, to uh, Donna to, to share with uh, the Shade Tree and Environmental Commissions and maybe even the Mayor, Mayor and Council and the Township Manager and whatever? Yes, I mean, there there are a lot well, of requirements, no, but the first here. one is, is our town smaller than 50,000 people? Yeah, no, that's definitely us. Okay, so we're, we're, we've run past. Ed hasn't started screaming yet. That means he probably was asleep. So uh, he's awake now, I can see. So anyone want to end this meeting? I, I, I uh, move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. I will second. June second, I did a team and they're taking tonight. Yeah. Anyone we'll in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> I'm by. <laughs> Take care. Okay, Moshe, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Time tomorrow. We get a chance. Take care, Rocha. Yep. Good night. Good night. Well. Say, um, uh, impact to, um, NGOs like.